all right thank you for clicking on this video and today what i'm going to share with you is proxy provider with the firebase authentication use case so what is a proxy provider so inside the provider flutter package documentation or readme it says that proxy provider is a provider that combines multiple values from other providers into a new object and send the result to the provider. So you will use it when you need an object that is updated whenever one of the provider it depends updates. In this example, you have a translation based on a counter coming from another provider. So you see here, there's a change notifier provider and then it uses a counter change notifier. So the proxy provider will be listening to the counter value and then we'll use the counter value to be used inside the translation class. So that's just one use case of using a proxy provider. However, in this video, we are going to go through on how we are going to use a Firebase authentication using proxy provider. From the previous example, you could see that the proxy provider is placed inside a multi-provider. And now you are going to use the Firebase authentication and most of the time you just need the UID for you to do a lot of stuff. Maybe grab data from your Firestore and such. So from my case, we use a stream provider for us to listen if the user has logged in. So let's look at a deeper dive on what is actually happening. So inside the multi provider, we have a proxy provider here that's listening to this user or Firebase user in order for it to then manipulate the user data into something else to return to the widgets that are listening to the proxy provider. So once a user logged in, the Firebase authentication stream provider will return us a user object that the proxy provider needs. Once the proxy provider has a user object, then it will manipulate the user object to use its properties to turn into something that the other widgets needs. For example, the user ID or UID in short. Then it will send the UID to the widgets that are listening to the proxy provider. So that's a very short explanation on how a proxy provider works using maybe a Firebase authentication stream provider. So let's see this implementation in actual code. I have with me here a very simple app with some buttons and some text. So let me just quickly go through on what widgets I used for this app view. So you have a size box of a height of 300 to have this spacing. And then you have a text widget that simply says has user sign in with a theme of headline four. And then another size box of height 50 and then you have an animated default text style. So what does it do? Next, we have the animated default text style or basically this no word. So this is a widget that allows you to have animations with your text style. So a very simple text style animation that I did here is that if the user is logged in, then it will actually return us a yes with the color green. So you see the transition color go from green to red and red to green. And then you can have a duration of maybe 1.5 seconds and then you can have a very easy curve. If you want me to go through on any animations that you can use in your Flutter app or Flutter web project, leave a comment down below. All right, next up we have a very simple size box with 100. And lastly, we have a row of buttons sign in and sign out, sign in when on press, sign in anonymously using Firebase authentication, and then sign out helps us to sign out if we were to be logged in. So it's a very simple app that you can use. If you want the source code, the link in the description. Now with this, we are going to implement the proxy provider. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to have a multi provider. So app view is just this view that we have created. So let's wrap this with a widget multi provider. And it requires a providers parameter and it is a list of providers. We need to create a stream provider 
we need a type of Firebase user and inside our Firebase user stream provider, we will have to create a parameter create using the Firebase off instant on off state change. So this returns us a stream of Firebase user. And lastly, we can also have an initial data of now. Alright, the next thing that we need to do is we need to create a proxy provider. So let's type in proxy provider and it requires an update. But first, we need to add in the type. So let's see how many types a proxy provider requires. You can see here it requires two types and both are dynamic. So we need to specify the two types that we want to do. So the first type is the one that we are listening, which is the Firebase user. And then the second type is the value that we are returning. If you were to go to the app view, the value that we need is a Boolean. So let's type in Boolean. And these are the two types that is required for a proxy provider. So one thing to note is that proxy provider can support up to six types. So you can listen to six different values and return one object that you manipulate. All right, so let's add in our update parameter. So inside the update parameter, there's three arguments that it requires. The build context, the Firebase user that we are listening to, and the Boolean that we are returning. So let's add in the argument. So our context, our Firebase user, and our Boolean. Why did I put this underscore is because we are not going to use this underscore. And the only thing they are using is the Firebase user that you are listening to. So this requires us to return a value type Boolean. So let's return. What we are returning is a Boolean whether the user is logged in. We can put a simple conditional if user is not equal to now. So this will return true if user is logged in. Now we will add in our provider dot of context with the type Boolean. So let's save this. All right, has user signed in? No. And if you were to click sign in, it will say yes. You can see the animation where it transits from red to green. And then if we sign out, and then transit from green to red. Okay, so this is a very simple implementation. What if we want a proxy provider that returns us the user ID? So let's change this type Boolean into a string. Now let's change this user to a user ID. So it returns us a string. However, we still require is logged in Boolean. So what we can do is we can have a different Boolean that says UID and then is logged in will then say UID if it's not equal to null. All right, let's save if it, it works. All right, it doesn't work because invalid member on null UID. So inside the user, if it returns us a null, this will shout an error. So let's have a catch where it returns a null if user is null. Okay, has user signed in? No. Let's add in a print statement to see our UID whether if the user has logged in. So currently we are uh, not logged in, so it returns us a null, which is correct. If we were to click on the sign in button, you could see that it returns us a UID. Now, if we were to sign out, then it returns a null and it says no. So, this is an example of the proxy providers that I'm using inside a Udemy course that I'm going to release next week. You could use the proxy provider to return a collection reference and streams. So one disadvantage of having to use proxy providers is that it does not act as a stream provider. Meaning that if you want to have, for example, you want to return a list of links from a stream, you have to then go to another widget, for example, settings page, and then you have to call the different streams that you have created in your main dot dot into, for example, a settings page, initialize the variables, put it inside the different stream providers inside a multi provider. So these are some examples that I've done using proxy provider. If you have not signed up for my Flutterweb Udemy course, 
the link is in the description. So is proxy provider the best use case in order for you to get the user UID? Not really, it depends on the situation. So one thing that I found out that I think is better, Starter Architecture Flutter Firebase by Code with Andrea. He has created this widget called Auth Widget Builder. What this does is it gets the Firebase auth service through a provider and then he uses a stream builder to see whether the user is logged in. If user is not logged in, then he returns a multi-provider that wraps around the builder method that he returns. And inside the multi-provider, he returns the user and Firestore database that he needs the widgets that are listening to. So there are many different ways that you can do this, but this I think is the best way because all of your data that you need to listen in various widgets are inside one file rather than having a multi-provider with the stream and proxy provider and having another multi-provider in another page. It depends on your situation. So that's about it. Thank you for watching this video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.